Okay, just one minute and we're ready to go. Can you guys hear the sound from my chair? No. No, no. Okay. Anyways, No. I need I need to get a new chair. Okay, guys. So we're ready to go. I'm gonna share my screen. Actually, let's let's wait for two more minutes because there is still people joining. So before we start, you now where are you guys going on vacation? I'm On in vacation. Costa Rica at the moment. Okay, so you're on vacation. You chat. You're in Florida. You're always on vacation. It's the endless summer here, but I'll be going to Nosara, Costa Rica coming up shortly. Okay, Oh my okay. god, Chad, I'm in I'm in Costa Rica right now. Is there something Oh yeah? happening in Costa Rica that we don't know about? <laughs> it's AI, it's AI super Summit. weird. Undercover Summit. Let me um let me send you something to listen to Chad uh before you go. It's it's Yeah, very for sure. I mean, I've been I've been many times, but I'm always open to listen to new things. It's a history podcast. I'm a bit of a history uh bit of a history nerd. Okay. Yeah, drop it. That's cool. Yeah, Costa Rica, the country of Jurassic Park. I was reading the book recently, you know. So Nice. Yeah, by by the way, the book is very interesting. It doesn't have anything to do with the movie, you know. Really? Yeah. Completely different? Yeah, very different, you know. Whoa, didn't expect. I'm going skiing in the Alps. Yeah, man. Make sure that you come in one piece. Yeah. I try every year. Okay. Joe, what are you doing? I How am did you go I dinner? am so um fabulous in comparison to everyone else. I'm literally just staying at home in Cologne and um sort of doing very quiet Christmas with my with my family. So yeah, it's No all worries. right. No worries. No worries. And I, I'll be lost. I'm going to Nazare, Portugal. Who knows what is Nazare? I know God knows. Surfing. I know. Yeah, surfing. The biggest wave in the world. I, I'm not going to try on the biggest one, but if they have some moderate ones, I'll try it out. Okay, enough to chat about the vacation and stuff. Okay, guys, so I'm going to share my screen. We can actually start with the last webinar of the year. So thank you for everybody who joined our webinar. This is the last, but I would say, but not the least because, you know, the, I don't, I'm not sure what is, what is the sign of the Chinese here, but this year globally, it was the year of AI. It started very was a huge trend now it's it's a little more sophisticated but i've never done an AI webinar and that's why now i decided to end the year with an AI webinar with some of the top experts in the e-commerce space because everybody's talking about that but those guys actually are using that in their companies so they use ai to help and solve issues for sellers some of our speakers used to work at amazon now they're building AI tools or you're providing advisory for that sound. Two of our, of our other speakers today, they're, they have scaled and sold multiple companies. And now they're actually building and scaling companies who do AI. And I'm your host. I'm Nick Penny. I'm the co-founder of Hello Tax. I'm the co-founder of Extreme Power Brand, Scale.com, and partnership manager of Hello Tax. So let me share my screen and we're going to go over what we're going to talk about today. Okay, guys, let me know if you see my screen. Yes. Okay. Okay. As I mentioned, you know, here are our speakers. The title of the webinar is the AI Advantage Webinar, Generating Content, Dynamic Pricing Integration, and AI Sales Mastery. Chad Rubin is the founder of Prophecy. I'm going to let the speakers introduce themselves in more details and uh, shortly. I'm going to just mention uh, what, who they are right now. So Joe Wambajeva is the founder of AMZ. Amazing Wave, Wuka Boriani is the co-founder of ZipChat, and Max Sinclair is the founder of Ecom10. And I'm going to do a short spotlight about myself. I said I'm the co-founder of Extreme Power Brands and Scale. I run the partnership for Hello Tux and I advise 40 companies in the Ecom space how to grow for partnerships. I'm also a webinar host. I've done probably over 200 webinars that I've hosted and probably over 300 as a guest speaker. And the one thing that I'm most proud of I am fully remote since 2010, long, long before it was cool. And here I'm going to mention the sponsors today. Our goal sponsors are uh, two of my companies, Extreme Power Brands, like it's where a partnership is a service agency and network with over 1,000 companies. We also have a SaaS tool, which we, scale, which we launched a few months ago. It's called Scale, scale.com. And you can use this tool to actually grow your partner network 
or do proactive referrals. You can check it out to learn more. We're giving away one free partnership audit for free uh, from Extreme Power Brands. You need to be an e-commerce or Amazon service providers to qualify for that. We're going to tell you if you suck at partnerships, if you're great, or if you're doing good, how, how we can improve that. And like I said, t t check it out, check out scale.com. It's free. You're going to get a lot of value for that. Uh, then our silver sponsor today is the uh, expansion to EU uh, squad, which is organized by Helltag. This is an all-in-one expansion to Europe solution, which covers VAT, accounting and automation, product components, logistics, customs, translation, product research, funding, FX, bonuses, and agency recommendation. Each brand which would like to expand to Europe, you can get over 3,000 US dollars in bonuses from those partners, and you can see the logos here. So we kind of cover everything, so you can actually scale your brand to Europe. But somebody's going to say, okay, why should I care about Europe, Nick? USA is the big market. So that's true. But here are a few stats that I can actually mention so you guys know why you should consider that. So the first thing is in Europe, there is 450 million customers. These are people over 18. So that's almost 50% more than the USA. Europe has uh, less competition because only 2% of Amazon USA orders are all sell selling across Amazon Pani. So 98% of her uh, competitors are not here yet. If you're selling in your home country, you're still a local brand. So by going to a whole new continent, you can actually become a global brand. And the last thing, you know, your competitors are scared to go to Europe because they don't know how. And that's why we have the expansion package so we can help expand to Europe. You come to us, you tell us what you need, and we have all the parts we're going to help out with everything. Product compliance, VAT, logistics, customs, localization, you can actually start selling. And here is our last sponsor of the day. This is our content partner, Adobe Ads. Adobe Ads is an hour to winning creative service company for Amazon and other e-commerce servers. They design product infographics, EBC images and videos. They're giving free complete sets of EBC images for free. The value is 600 US dollars. We have more giveaways and, and more free stuff, but you will need to wait for the recording tomorrow to get those. So I, I'm done, guys. And now let's go to our speakers. First, ladies first. Joe is going to talk about how to build the customer persona using AI. Then Max is going to talk about gener generative Amazon infographics and AI pools with AI. Wuka is going to talk about how to reduce cart abandonment rate with AI. And last but not the least, Chat is going to talk about the power of AI tools and prompts and how to 10x your business and life. And of course, at the end, we're going to have the Q&A session. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat or the Q&A session and we're going to answer those at the end. We're going to record, we're recording live, so we're going to cut the webinar into sessions so you'll be able to watch all your favorite stuff after that. So thank you everybody for joining and now let's talk about AI and what you guys don't know about that. So Joe, the stage is yours. Tell us more about oh. you what you've done and tell us what you're cooking right now. Sure, I have a nice slide for it, Nick. I mean, you can't do it without a slide. Um, you guys have to give me a shout if I start jabbering and then I go over time because I appreciate we all have to talk. So, uh, and there's always the pressure of being the first. So, you know, like- No uh, worries, no. You thrive under pressure, yeah, so don't fine. worry. Take your time. Yeah, it's so much pressure. All right, let me just do this. All right, can you see my screen? Sweet. All right. So today I'm going to run you guys through um, how to build a customer persona using AI and why actually you should consider doing that um, pretty much in your day to day. So who's talking? It's me. I'm Joe Lamborghini. Um, I have been working in the area of marketing and e-commerce for the last, well, more than 13 years. Um, in my career, I work with more than 40 different brands uh, spanning sports, retail, beauty, just everything, you name it. Um, and now I'm, what I am, what I've essentially built is a consultancy specifically focusing on helping e-commerce sellers use AI um, to integrate AI into their processes. 
Um, now, what I definitely would recommend you guys to check out is um, also my AI and e-commerce newsletter, which I run every week. And this is specifically tailored for e-commerce and Amazon sellers. Um, and if you like to connect with me on LinkedIn, there is a nice little QR code I post about um, AI and e-commerce. I mean, you guys get the gist. It's AI and e-commerce um, every day. So please connect with me. I would love to keep in touch. All right, so what is a customer persona? Well, in essence, it's essentially your blueprint to your ideal customer. Um, you normally build it, um, or I normally like to build it based on market research and a lot of real data, because that kind of allows you to actually build a very realistic image or a profile for the person you are selling to already, or to the person that you would like to sell. And um, here's just a, a nice little example of a customer persona and why this is valuable is because it really gives you a very clear understanding of what, um, what their demographics are, but also what their goals, needs, frustrations, how they consume media, how do they, what do they value and what they actually get frustrated from is, and in this way, actually target all of your um, marketing activity, your strategy, and even your product development. All right, so why do you need one? I mean, you know, it, it sounds like something fancy, but you know, you probably haven't really used customer personas till now well honestly i think in 2023 not using customer persona is actually not going to you are going to fall behind because in essence you really need to focus on knowing your customer and and starting from that point to make all of your strategic decisions in terms of how you grow your brand um, because obviously knowing your customer is is sort of a key way to engage with them and to actually um, give them the products and the services um, and the sort of the messaging that they would really resonate with and buy from you. So um, in terms of what you can use it, obviously target your marketing and figure out where exactly to reach this customer. Um, it can also help you actually decide on product development and how to tailor your product, your packaging to actually capture and engage these customers so that they can buy from you, um, to tailor all of your communication. And this is actually something that I'm going to cover a little bit later, but anything from how the tone of voice of your emails to how you optimize your Amazon listing, it should be dictated by this ideal customer persona. And then just in general, how you build your overall strategy in terms of how you sell to this customer, that this is sort of your starting point. So um, if you know me well, I am a bit of a nerd and I absolutely like make most of the decisions I do from a business point of view, but I just in general in life with data. And so the reality is that a lot of people here maybe are starting or aspirational Amazon sellers and they are like, well, I don't have any data. The reality is that you do. Um, you just need to have a little think about it and some inspiration. So if you are if you are already selling on Amazon, you probably already have a wealth of data. You can you probably have some customer data, maybe from customer service uh, surveys or from your past emails. Um, you probably have access to Amazon audience analytics, especially if you are based in the US. Maybe you have your own D2C site so you can get some Google analytics data. Um, there is a lot of wealth of data online as well in terms of um, market research reports, um, just sort of Google insights. Um, you can use competitor analysis, um, but if you don't have any data, that's totally okay because you can also use the wealth of data that is on Amazon, or you can even use ChatGPT. This is kind of more advanced, but you can absolutely use, use ChatGPT or any of the AI chatbots to get to help you get, get some more um, audience data and use that to build your customer profile. All right. so. I'm whizzing through this, which is good. I am on time. Um, so I'm going to go now step by step how to do this. So the first one is pick your weapon. So pick your chatbot. Now, I'm not going to go through um, essentially comparing each one of them. Um, so here we have the logos are ChatGPT, Claude, Bing, and Bard. And each of the, these has their pros and cons. But just in general, um, I would recommend for the purpose of this exercise to use 
potentially a mixture between ChatGPT and Claude because they give you um, a wide enough um, sort of context windows and you can tailor them quite a lot. And especially with ChatGPT, you can use um, a lot of um, Excel data to feed into it and actually an analyze the data and then give you the best output. Um, so step one, I would for this particular example, I would pick ChatGPT. Step two, um, feed your data. So what I've done here, just for the purpose of this example, this is very top line. If uh, if I were to do this in quite detail, I would probably go through a few more steps in terms of feeding the algorithm, the AI with a little bit more data. But for the purpose of this, I've essentially pulled a positive and negative reviews from an example product and my competitors' products. And I have also pulled some of the uh, Amazon audience data. Um, and I have fed, fed that into the custom analytics from ChatGPT. Generally, the more data you feed it, the better. Obviously, it totally depends on um, context windows and like how much data it is. You might have to summarize some of this. But in general, this would be a good way to start. And what I have done here is actually notice that I don't really build a mega prompt. And I think this is a, an important an important note when you use ChatGPT, for example, ideally you want to go step by step and like get output every step and then use that output to build onto your prompt next. So here I have essentially asked for ChatGPT to just um, read the data, analyze it and just shut up. And so until I get the next point of instruction. Um, then the next step is then to build actually what is the output or what do I want the chat GPT to do with that data. Again, this is pretty straightforward prompt. Um, I have basically said using the data, uh, I would like you to um, build me the customer uh, persona. I have given a little bit of information about what I do, but again, in a, in a real life situation, I would again feed much more into chat GPT about who I am targeting. And then I have given it sort of a, a complete output of what I want it to actually give me in terms of the structure. Again, this is something you can tailor, but I normally like to ask for as detailed as possible breakdown of this customer persona. And then step four is then the actual outputs that ChatGPT gives me, which is then building onto that persona. Again, this is not a copy paste job. Like, you know, ChatGPT is going to come up with something. It's your job to use your brain um, to actually uh, amend this work with the prompt, um, ask, like reiterate until you get to a detailed enough uh, customer profile and a one that actually can serve you then for the next steps. So what are the next steps? All right, so now you have a customer persona and so what? Well, once you have this customer persona, you can essentially personalize uh -huh, all of your content going forward. So um, you can use what you have built in terms of all of these features that are here, whether it's the psychographics, the consumer behavior, the goals and motivations to actually then inform how your content sounds then they're um, going forward. So um, you can use the customer persona to then write a compelling uh, Amazon listing copy to write uh, uh, an email copy or a whole email funnel to rewrite your website copy uh, to actually help you with, for example, um, creating uh, com compelling advertising images through DALI 3. Um, you can use it to tailor customer support scripts, uh, to develop loyalty programs. Um, so and even to to the, to guide you through product development. So there is so many use cases, and this is just a small snapshot of what you should use your customer persona um, in order to actually just make everything that you do more tailored to your customer. And with that, obviously, increase conversion and just generally their loyalty towards your brand. Right. I am at 10 minutes. So get in touch. Um, here's one uh, QR code you can scan to join my AI for e-commerce and Amazon uh, newsletter. Um, and the second one is um, obviously I'm, I'm starting a, a boot camp in January specifically for Amazon sellers. So if you're interested, scan the second QR code. And if you're not interested in any of that, you can still contact me by just uh, sending me a classic old email. And uh, that's it.
Actually, Joy, you have one more minute. So you're even, even too fast. Now I sing that's... a song. I yeah, mean, but, yeah, you no don't worries, really but that's that. what happened when you do AI all the time. You became a machine. So <laughs> Yes, so. I don't think people would need to put this on uh, two speed because I think I actually did that for myself. So congratulations, guys. You can yeah, actually, you we have a question from you before we continue. Uh, the question is, uh, right. that's for everybody. Would you be guys sending the slides? Because I'm going to be sending the recording. Would you be sharing the slides? as well sure okay okay guys so we'll have the context of our speaker so just tell them i want your slides and they're going to send them to you so just get in touch after the webinar and for the i have another question i'm going to answer that quickly from mark steer is that your travel map if so how many countries have you visited around 40 so i'm way way an amateur yet so i'm going to be traveling more mark so now let's continue with our next next speaker you know that do you guys remember who is the next speaker or i need to remind I think you it was, i think it was me yeah hello yeah. everyone how's everyone doing merry christmas i will share my screen and i'm gonna hopefully try and okay but by the way you... max is the first ai partner in the e-commerce space that i've met it was exactly at the beginning of the year you know so but there he's going go. to more about him i know some stuff I don't know everything. He's going to tell what he, he's been doing because he has been in Amazon and now he's on the other side of Amazon. So, Max, thanks for agreeing to speak. Tell us more about you and what you have prepared for us. Sure. I have a slide on that. So, this is me. Um, I was at Amazon for six years. I won't, I'm going to time myself just to make sure that I don't overlap for anyone else. Um, so, I was at Amazon for six years. Um, I set up the catalog in Singapore. I ran the 3P grocery business in the EU. Um, in 20, I quit my job in 2022 when my co-founder showed me Stable Diffusion. This is in a pre-chat GPT era. And I saw for the first time you put in some text, you generate an image. And I thought, wow, this is going to absolutely revolutionize e-commerce. And we have been building e-content since then. E-content stands for e-commerce content in a, in a combined uh, way. Um, so I guess I'll start my presentation with just giving a bit of background about what is Gen AI. Um, AI has been around for since the 1950s. Um, we use it in Amazon, we use it in Google Maps. We, you know, we all we're all very uh, aware of what it is. But what we're dealing with now is a slightly different type, uh, well, a fundamentally different type of of artificial intelligence, which basically enables you to generate new content. It's, as you probably all know, not super accurate, but it's able to handle a lot of more creative tasks. And the way it works is, is not by magic, but it's by prediction. So an AI, um, artificial intelligence only understands numbers. So every single, if you're taking chat GPT, every single uh, uh, kind of word in the English language becomes a number with, hella, you know, with A being one and the xylophone being 17,000 or whatever it is. And basically what it does is it, you train a model and it's predicting, okay, with this sequence of number, what is the next, most, like, most likely next token? So this uh, is the same with kind of stable diffusion and image generations. It's looking at these pixels, which actually are just numbers and trying to guess what is the next most likely token. So for every token you can, as you can imagine, is starting the likeliness of a next token appearing. So for, you know, the word hello, probably it's a 9% likelihood I've made this up, that how is the next one and squirrels is super unlikely. And therefore, with the more data you give the AI, the more tokens, the better its guess is becoming the next one. So, you know, you give it hello how, and it's going to know basically that it's going to be more likely to be R, like hello, how are you, than squirrels which is a totally random word so that's basically what's happening you have these huge uh, ai models which are basically just doing super complicated maths you give them some some tokens and it's predicting them most likely next best token based if it's training and, and the prompt you give it so why do we think these things are intelligent so this is a quote that um i'll read out because it's super long but basically or i'll summarize when we when when you're training these neural networks and you're training this these models to understand how to best predict the next word or the uh, the next pixel whatever it is what are you actually training it to do is compress kind of 
human world and life and intelligence. Uh, and therefore, by kind of in this process of crunching all of these tokens and words together, you, this AI actually gets a pretty usable representation of the world. Um, so that's kind of where the intelligence comes from. And a good question you may be thinking, or may, may not be, but should be maybe thinking is like, okay, if you're predicting the most next, uh, the most likely next word, when I give the same prompt, how come I'm always getting different things? And this is basically uh, the temperature settings. So you can control on these AI models how to give the, you know, the top, uh, the most likely next token the top 5% or 0.5% or 0.005% depending on the temperature setting. And broadly a bigger, a, a greater, a hotter temperature is going to allow it to hallucinate more and just kind of go a bit more crazy within a certain parameters of how likely things are. And, uh, you know, going super precise um, with like a, with a higher temperature, with a lower temperature setting means that you don't allow this to happen. And the final thing to to understand is that you actually can increase the quality of these um, AI tools by fine tuning. So this is when you you know when you have ChatGPT or a base model, and you're taking um, specific data like an e-content uh, use case. We took you know highly converting um, images for 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 you know lifestyle images, and we also took you know high highly converting. Amazon listings, and you fine tune on top of the base model to make it more likely to produce words or pixels in that kind of format compared to, you know, the original base format, which is, you know, just producing something, anything in the internet. So that's hopefully a bit, well, hopefully that gives you a bit of a background. It's not super simple, but hopefully it gives you a five minute tour of what these AI models actually are as, as we're dealing with them today. So the next kind of question the biggest question that i get asked a lot is around prompting i mean it's something we've done a lot of um research into any content so hopefully from that you can kind of picture that ai models don't have any innate intelligence they don't understand text that you give them they're basically just understanding the tokens or the you know the the order of, of the text or whatever that you give it and it's breaking that down and then it's giving you something based on its trading data and it's fine tuning um Yes, so I think that's something here. So how, so at, at eContent, we we basically took um, ten thousand uh, plus uh, kind of customer generated images, and we started to rank them to understand what prompts get the best output for customers. So, for example, here's an image generated by a customer. The prompt was a very high quality and modern crowded restaurant, a very pretty happy waitress, blah 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 blah. And we um, we rated this in accuracy accuracy uh, six out of ten because you've got some elements. You know, basically you got sixty percent of the elements in the prompt coming out, and the quality is four out of ten. And basically we define like how we think about quality, uh, and basically anything lower than a five is not usable. And and we didn't think this image was was whilst okay, not not usable in a, like a professional context. Here's another prompt, a portrait of a beautiful woman wearing pendant and silver necklace, studio lighting, high quality HDR. And this, uh, you know, had a 10 out of 10 accuracy and 9 out of 10 quality, because basically every single element of that, um, you know, these are two customer products and every single element of the first of the second prompt is in the picture and it's and it's a good usable quality. So that's how we kind of labeled. Uh, here's two more examples. I'll just get through this. Um, this is a classic thing that we see people trying to talk to the AI as if it's kind of, uh, um, you know, a human. Uh, the, the customer wrote, forget all the images generated, generator, blah, 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 blah. This basically generated nothing of any use. I couldn't even tell you what that is. And on the other side, uh, you know, a really short um, specific prompt of this dog food and you generated a dog, dog next to it, uh, which was, again, high rated. So, as I said, we ranked... Uh, we did this with 10,000 images. Uh, I had a team of 15 uh, uh, students, computer science students, and we found the following uh, in terms of how to prompt. You should start, uh, you, you should you should basically have the following structure. You should start with a subject um, in or on a, the scenario location, uh, and then you should add your descriptions. So the subject would be your product. Uh, so I don't know if you're selling a coffee mug, coffee mug, uh, you should use a very generic 
a kind of type of uh, product like this, like chair, if you're selling chairs. And then you would go into your uh, scenarios or locations. Basically, how do you want your product to interact with its, uh, you know, with the image? So is it being worn? Is it on a table? Is it, uh, I don't know, on, on grass? However it's interacting, that's kind of the, the next part of the prompt. And at the end, you want to have these descriptors. So, um, for example, here, kind of like office setting, uh, blur, like all of this kind of stuff. Um, and and I'll, I can share some some resources afterwards for some good kind of descriptors. So that's um, tip number one in terms of structure. Tip number two in terms of ex of of using AI is, ex is to experiment. So we saw this. Uh, this is the relationship between how many monthly prompts customers did in our tool and what the quality was. And there was, as you would hope, a relationship between how much they they did it and experimented and and what what we rank their quality to be. Um, the third the third tip is not to be polite to AI. So we saw that if you didn't in include words like please or please do this or these kind of phrases into your prompting, you got a twelve you got a thirteen percent increase in accuracy and a ten percent increase in quality. Um, and this could be. Uh, to do with, to some extent, like the word count decrease, uh, which, you know, basically half. But we didn't really see a relationship between um, word length, like prompt length and quality, more that what were the type of things that people were were, were uh, talking about. Um, my next tip is for, pe is for um, people. Um, so these are both images of people generated on any content. Uh, and this is true of all, but like, as I said, e-content is just fine, uh, fine tuned a base model, basically same base model as any, any, you know, competitor or mid journey or whoever, whoever you want to talk about. Um, and for people, close ups work a lot better. So, um, you know, trying to get rid of, uh, hands and limbs and this kind of thing, which, which distorts it. Um, I know I'm nearly at time. So last one is check your spelling and grammar. So I'm gonna, yeah, those are the summaries. I'm gonna I'm gonna run quickly through this now because I know I'm at time. Um and yeah, the last thing I know we called it um uh, we we called it the the title of my talk, infographics. We've we've just enabled the ability to actually not just generate lifestyle images, but infographics in e content, which is combining basically uh Claude and and st stable diffusion to create some beautiful visuals. Um so that's it. Uh, I hope that was interesting and useful. Uh, we've got a 10% off discount to e-content here by scanning this code. And um, and yeah, I'll hand it over to whoever is is next. Okay, thanks, thanks Max. And guys, you don't need to be... I mean, you're, you're very precise today, you know. I give you 10 minutes so we don't do like 30. You don't need to okay. <laughs> hurry up. But anyways, I think the one thing I recommend to everybody, you know, our speakers are not shy. So after we send the recording, you can have a chat with them and you can talk in more details how they can help you out. So this is just like a quick summary, quick tips you can watch that eventually. But the best way to warn is by chatting with those guys. So get get in touch. Don't be shy. They don't, they're not warriors. They're not going to charge you by the minute. I'm, I'm a little shy, Nick. How did you presume that I'm not shy? I'm a little shy. Yeah, I mean, you're not shy. You're a speaker in <laughs> a webinar. So you're just pretending to be shy. But... Now we're going to talk about somebody who is not shy because he's not a human. It's an AI sales guy. So sales guys are not shy. And Luca and his partner, Carl, have built an AI sales person who is going to guide you on, on websites. Now that's as far as I remember. You know? But let me introduce our next speaker, Luca Boriani. And he's going to tell more about himself, his partner, and what they have been building uh, recently. So thanks again, man. Tell us more about you. Hi, all. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So let's present this. Uh, perfect. So I'm Luca Boreani. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I'm an ex-affiliate marketer. It's where I started my journey back in uh, 2012, something like that, when I was still in college. That was my way to escape the uh, what was my biggest error that was to actually create a CV and send it over to companies to get hired. So that was where what I was most uh, uh, mostly scared of. Um, so at some point I started to say, okay, uh, if I'm so good at promoting other people's stuff uh, in exchange of a 
an ex, um, a fixed fee, uh, sorry, a commission. Why don't uh, I ask them a fixed fee plus uh, a commission? So I started my agency that later on I sold. Then I decided to join the startup world and they created Udropy, uh, where I personally raised from Sequoia Capital and Jason Calacanis, two big names in the uh, VC worlds. And I personally acquired over 120K uh, merchants, Shopify merchants, that were basically using our e-commerce infrastructure to source products from China and ship them uh, everywhere in the world to the end customers. Last year, I exited the company and uh, uh, I started to be advisor to some other startups like Tilly.com, uh, today valued, I think, 10 to 12 million, according to the last round, and Ulama.io, which is another 10 million company, and uh, some smaller startups. Today, uh, I'm the co-founder of ZipChat AI, uh, where basically we are uh, we have created an AI chat that allows um, e-commerce merchants to sell more and completely handle their customer support without the need of live agents. So uh, I have a question for everybody. You can answer uh, inside your head, I guess. Uh, it's this is something I was talking, um, I think two weeks ago in a big event in Milan with uh, 500 people. It was a live event, so it was easier. Everybody raising their heads, their hands. So in this case, um, I'm pretty sure you can uh, write in the chat probably. So the question is, how often do you decide not to buy something just because of a last minute doubt? That's that's actually a big thing. I think everybody. Um, has been doing something like that in the in, in in their life. You go to an online store or even like offline. You go to an offline store. You want to buy something. You're uh, actually committed because you saw some really good marketing campaign. Uh, but because of some last minute doubt, you just drop and you just don't buy. Could be anything. Could be if you're buying fashion, uh, something about the size, um, or if you buy some technology product, you might be uh, unsecure if that product is actually compatible with uh, your other devices. So you just uh, don't buy. Unless especially offline, some good sales assistant just come to you and with a usual sentence, uh, may I help you or something like that, they actually start answer uh, your questions. We actually know uh, that's because of one of, this is one of the reasons uh, e-commerce uh, global average conversion rate is uh, approximately between 20%. And that means all the other people uh, somehow, even if uh, they came to your website because of good marketing, don't buy. But most cases, these people just buy, never come back. And uh, this is a big problem for your uh, your marketing spend because, of course, you paid a lot to acquire this, uh, this traffic. Uh, and when they leave, that's uh, basically money you wasted, especially nowadays that uh, CPAs are uh, growing because of CPMs even uh, more expensive year after year. You, th th this is a big issue. And uh, sometimes it's even worse. Uh, this is a, a merchant that just joined us a, a couple of days ago. Uh, he sent me this screenshot. And as you can see, that's not even in the average range. Like it's zero point, not even 3% conversion rates. I think everybody in the audience can say that's not a great result. Lucky for the, luckily for them, most of the traffic is organic. But what else do we know? According to Forrester, uh, a big research company in the uh, US, most uh, more than 53% of online shoppers actually um, leave because they cannot find uh, what they want is AP. And most of the time is because they cannot find the right answer just at the last minute. So as, as I was mentioning before, uh, you want to buy something and then suddenly something happened and you come up with some doubts. That's doubts can be uh, the size or the compatibility of the device you, you want to buy or whatever uh, thing, but you cannot find an answer. If you're offline, the sales assistant just uh, will just approach you and start to uh, to talk to you, answer your question, and you might end up buying even more that you were uh, willing to buy when you enter the shop. But online, it's a little bit different. And moreover, uh, more than 73% of people actually uh, say that the most important thing a brand can do is valuing their time. And this is basically along the entire journey. Uh, this is something most likely you experience yourself as well. You uh, don't like uh, to waste time watching uh, endless videos or you don't like to uh, too many steps to buy or do something online. So this is, of course, something really common um, out there. 
and this impacts a lot your conversion rates and people actually drop your uh, website or abandon your cart if they find too many steps or uh, it's too boring, it's not clear or this kind of uh, last minute doubts just appear from nowhere. So what's the secret to convert more? Basically, uh, you always have to uh, answer last minute inner doubts in no time and this leads to more conversion. So if I'm losing time getting that kind of last minute uh, answers, I'm not gonna buy. If I'm able to get those answers to my inner questions fast, I will buy. This is what happens uh, really often nowadays. But we have to remember that unfortunately, people nowadays are lazy. So all the solution we come up with, uh, I'm an ex-copywriter. Uh, I mean, I, I yet to do copywriting for, uh, for affiliate marketing. Uh, but most time today, people are really lazy. So unless the sales letter or the sales page, it's really, really well written and super long and whatever uh, with all the details um, and really engaging, people just won't read it. It doesn't matter uh, all the other circumstances, just because most of the time today's buyers are not uh, are, are often on the go. That's why most of the traffic is mobile. So they just don't have time to, 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 to invest into reading your content. So that's why uh, even like super detailed product description are good, but uh, they are not enough because they're boring to read, often they're too technical. And uh, the problem is it's one uh, for all. So one size fits all. So it's not personalized. Uh, I might have different needs than other people. Uh, I might be uh, some niche uh, potential buyer and my needs might not be uh, answered or satisfied within the context. Of course, uh, I can call some toll-free number, but let's be realistic. This is a lot of friction, especially in 2023. <laughs> People just don't like to uh, take pick up the phone and uh, call some number and talk to some sales agent and uh, try to understand if the product is good. Of course, if it's a really expensive product, okay, that makes sense. Uh, regardless if it's like a physical product or a digital product. But if it's like in the range uh 10 to two three hundred dollars that's a lot of friction and uh, i'm pretty sure you can find yourself in not uh, gonna uh, call these kind of numbers if FAQs again are not personalized are uh, definitely boring and usually are really difficult to find within the website and let's say that most of the cases are not even product specific so if i come to the page to the product page um, the FAQ there are usually not, not there, or if they are there, are really not well written and super journalistic. So in that case, it's really difficult for me to find the answer fast. So most likely I will just drop because of my last minute doubts. So what became a, became a thing uh, in the past, I would say five to 10 years, something like that, uh, was live chats and chatbots. Many of you probably have used uh, as merchants uh, and most of you has definitely used it as uh, customers. You just go on a website, you ask some questions and uh, hopefully you're going to get an answer sooner or later. What does it mean sooner or later? Here we have three examples. Uh, those are three uh, basically really famous chats used by lots of merchants, lots of brands. The first one is Gorgeous, the second one is Zendesk, and the third one is the Shopify uh, native chat. Uh, as you can see, the customer experience is really, really bad. You go there, uh, you ask for a question, and then they start to provide you, if you're lucky, with some um, pre-configured paths where basically you just get lost and you you don't really know where, you, where you're standing at the end, if you arrive to an end. In the, in the worst case, uh, where, especially when there is a live chat and the brand uh, in front of you is not a huge brand with lots of live agents, you just wait for hours or uh, uh, unlimited time or until somebody connect the next days and send you an email with the information. But again, if you were buying something between 50 to 70 to hundred dollar, that's a really bad experience. Uh, you don't really want to wait days. You want to buy that moment and you want the answer that moment. Probably after days, you already bought from somebody else selling something similar, but that was able to, to, to give you the information like straight away. So what about uh, turning this terrible experience uh, in something better? That's basically what we have done with uh, ZipChat. We built an AI able to 
uh, follow the conversation and provide uh, useful information immediately without uh, letting anybody waiting uh, too much uh, and actually getting context about the product, uh, the, the person they have in front of them. So for example, the first question where here I asked, uh, I'm looking for a running t-shirt and uh, the, the chat was uh, basically collecting my information to then the day after uh, probably sending me that kind of information through email. In this case, the AI is just gonna ask two simple questions to create context and, and understand the needs of the visitors, which is, okay, are, uh, are you looking for a t-shirt for a man or for a woman? Uh, or And uh, do you prefer a regular fit or a slim fit? In this case, I just give the answer, men and regular tanks, and the AI will pick the best product uh, that uh, is available in the in the catalog and will recommend that product, giving you even like uh, some information about about the product itself. In the second case, which was a more more technical, again, it's gonna provide me not only uh, the product but also information uh, of compatibility with what kind of um, of phone uh, I own in order to. Uh, be sure the in this case the product was compatible with was uh, what I was looking for. So really immediate, really straight, uh, and that's why uh, our merchants are getting insane results uh, in these past months. Uh, I think um, our top merchants has something like thirty three percent conversion rate between um, chat uh, open and and uh, sale generated. And the ROI is just basically uh, insane, like crazy numbers, ROI on subscription they pay to us, uh, which of course uh, is bringing us a, a strong growth uh, as, as a software. So basically uh, the secret uh, behind the numbers is the personalized experience together with the knowledge of the context and proactivity of uh, the AI. The AI can personalize the way it provides uh, information to the visitor, which is something like a human uh, cannot do or can do like if it invests lots of time understanding who is speaking to. And also it's really still really difficult uh, for the human uh, being or of course like a pre-configured chat is just not able to do that. But for a human being, it's really difficult to have entire context about all products in the catalog and uh, all the uh, policies of the brand and uh, uh, all the possibilities uh, available to provide the best answer. That's what the AI uh, instead can do. And that's why the AI converts uh, lots of visitors and is uh, growing the conversion rates of uh, merchants every day. Um, you can, uh, if you want to give a try to ZipChat and check it, uh, you can just go on ZipChat AI and you can start your free trial and just use uh, Luca20 at the checkout to have 20% uh, of recurring on your subscription. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luca. That, that was very good. So you know what? I didn't know that, but I, I'm actually like ZipChat AI. Whenever I meet a partner, I ask them a list of questions and based on the answer, I distribute them to my other partners. So I was doing that manually, but I guess you guys stole my persona and you turned it into an AI. But right now we're going to talk about something which and nobody's talking about. Everybody's talking about revenue, sales. I'm a seven figure, eight figure. But how big is your figure in regards to profit? So our next speaker is Chad Rubin. He's grown and scaled and sold, I think, two companies, if I'm not mistaken, Chad. But I'm going to let him introduce himself you. and tell you more about what he's doing right now and what he's did in the past. So thanks again, Chad. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. And uh, thanks everyone for joining ahead of the holiday season. So for me today, my intent is to actually show you how you can leverage AI to become a better operator in your business and also a better human. Uh, a lot of the stuff I actually haven't discussed before, so a lot of it's a first time preview here. But before I get into the presentation, just a little bit about myself. Uh, actually, this photo doesn't work. Uh, there we go. There's the right photo, an AI generated photo. I look a lot more handsome, but Essentially, I'm running a dynamic pricing software for private label brands. So we change pricing like Uber or Lyft or Expedia to maximize profits for your business uh, and to extract the value discrepancy that's on the Amazon marketplace. Uh, I've been, I've sold, let's see, one, two, I've sold three companies now in my past. I've sold Stubana, an inventory system for multi-channel sellers, an agency along with the Prosper Show for Amazon brands. 
I still run an e-commerce business today, which is how I come up with all my ideas. And uh, I use that to really serve as an impetus for change in the e-commerce community, uh, along with the, the starting of Prophecy. So it's been a pretty crazy year. After I sold uh, Stubana, I essentially raised another $2.3 2 to scale Prophecy, which is, again, an AI-driven software. I've also taken a deep reset around uh, really a personal reset in life, specifically to hire coaches like chess coaches, DJ coaches, nutrition coaches, all those awesome things. I even bought a boat. So I first want to just start with like, this is actually how people are changing price on Amazon today, right? They, it goes something like this. They look at their competitor's price. They look at the marketplace. They see what everyone else offers. And they pretty much copy the price of the brand that copied their price. And they go slightly lower maybe to remain competitive, but the real secret is that they're copying people that are already broke. So why on earth do we copy them? So with Prophecy, we essentially figure out a way to do that profitably. Cool. That's the sponsor, Prophecy. And here is the actual presentation. So right now we're living through a pretty amazing time, right? Actually probably the most amazing time ever where we can essentially get delivery to our door of food. Everything is at our fingertips. My son can get his truck the same day, two hours in Miami. And yet the demands of life have sped up. And so the question is like, how do you win at life? And how do you win at business given the fact that like life is sped up the way it is, right? We're constantly bombarded with spam with everybody trying to get our attention. And if you look at my calendar, right, it's just an absolute mess. And so the question then is, if you're overwhelmed, how do you maximize life? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about how do you gain a little bit of freedom, and if you can get one nugget or two nuggets from this presentation, amazing, this is a really good use of your time today. That's really my intent, is to really give you one nugget, one piece of value that'll change your life. So for me, especially after I sold my last company, right, the most important thing to me is the spaces on my calendar. That's more impressive than anything else that I can focus on. And when my calendar isn't free, it absolutely sucks. And I have a long way to go, right? It's not nearly entirely free, especially running a startup, but every day I strive to be healthy, right? I try to have time for myself, do what I love, and, and uh, maintain healthy relationships. So... I'm going to give you some nuggets today, and hopefully, again, there's a couple of takeaways here. So one is specifically for AI, and these tools are getting better and better every day. Uh, but the first one that I absolutely love is LEAI, and I don't make any money on these things I'm recommending, but LEAI is a tool, it's a Chrome extension that connects into my Gmail browser and allows me to write emails and essentially reads the thread and allows me to customize the and train it so it's actually responding much more uh, in line with my voice and my style of writing. Just this alone actually changed my life because I spent so much time doing emails. Another one that I've been using a lot is Merlin AI, and it allows you to essentially like reply on Twitter, but also copy things from different browsers and search deeper on specific topics, find definitions. It's, it's a really awesome Swiss army knife that I use when I'm browsing the web. Uh, and then I know that uh, uh, Claude actually does this now, and now actually ChatGPT does, but essentially I used to uh, want to really deeply analyze PDFs, and a lot of the PDFs sometimes are unstructured, so I'd use chat PDF to, to chat with those PDFs to learn more and summarize different things and just out of curiosity uh, interrogate different PDFs that I'm trying to read and uh, allow me to ramp up faster on those PDFs. So the next thing, I know there's a lot of Amazon sellers on here. Uh, and it looks like I think I, I did shout out uh, Max's software, Ecomtent on here. But these are, to me, some of the most impressive softwares I've found in the space, uh, in the Amazon e-commerce space, because there's a lot of noise in the space. There's probably a new AI software every day. And so uh, just here's a great list, a nice tech stack that you can take a screenshot of, of the different categories and where people line up. Uh, I think also, yeah, ZipChat is on here too. So shout out to Luca. And Joe, I don't have your software on there because I think you're more of an agency Thank consultancy, you. but uh, very cool stuff that you're building. So um, here's some other AI tools I'm using to run my business outside of Amazon. 
One is essentially for us, we build all of our processes in Notion and we're using Scribe How to essentially create SOPs of documentation so that our team doesn't have to do it. And this allows us to scale processes a lot faster. Uh, here's TLDV, right? Which is essentially is video transcripts so that we can record videos and go back and reference different comments that people make. Uh, of course, I'm using Claude, but I've actually connected Claude to Slack specifically so that I don't have to actually switch and toggle between Claude and uh, and Slack. So I have Slack up on one screen and we have a chat related just to AI and asking questions. And then here's just a few personal ones. I know that you know just before this call started, internally we were talking about where everybody is vacationing and where to AI is an amazing itinerary planner, especially I know Joe, you're gonna be you're not going to be traveling right now, but perhaps maybe this will inspire you to throw something on the calendar. And it plans out your entire trip for you, depending on like what your needs are, if you're traveling traveling solo or with a family. So again, all these things are just meant to actually allow you to scale quicker, both your personal life and your business life. Summarize.tech to me allows me to summarize YouTube videos. So like typically a webinar like this, I like to actually sometimes just get the replay and then have it break down where there's different conversations and where I want to uh, really, really, really where I want to start the conversation in those YouTube videos. A few other things I'm like playing with right now, uh, I would say is uh, I'm actually really playing a lot with Bing Image Creator. I'm finding I'm getting a lot better results than using um, any other Image Creator right now. Uh, and Type in Mind allows me to organize a lot of my prompts, which we'll get into in a second. And I think I have another five minutes, Max. Is that, or Nick, is that right? No worries, man. We, we stopped the clock, so we have time. You're sharing a lot of valuable yeah. stuff, you know? Usually yeah, there's a lot here. This is this is me condensing uh, an hour presentation into 10 minutes. So I'm going super quick, really with the effort of just making sure that I'm, I'm dropping as much value as possible. So for me, um, AI in general is uh, like going to the gym. It's what you put in is what you're going to get out of it. And it's all about your inputs. And the better you get at putting in inputs, the better the output is going to be. So if you're putting in better reps, if your form is better, uh, everything actually increases and it compounds over time, which is the same as building muscle. So essentially, once you start actually writing prompts the right way and doing things, uh, what I think is like best practices in the prompt world, you'll be able to actually move even a lot faster than you ever imagined. So for me, I build a lot of my own custom prompts, uh, much longer than two sentences. I essentially get prompts from other people, and I'm using the Discord open AI chat that not a lot of people use. There's actually open source prompts in there that people are building and experimenting on. It's super rad. I also use a Chrome extension called AI PRM. And essentially, I built my own prompt library inside of Notion to house all the prompts that I build. So uh, I feed ChatGPT specifically better prompts so that I get the outputs that are better, right? So instead of give me five hooks, I'm feeding it with hooks that I like, for example, to generate hooks that are compelling and good because I'm not the world's best copywriter. I'm also using AI PRM, which is a Chrome extension that is an overlay inside ChatGPT that already has an open sourced uh, prompts built in, and I actually can see those prompts and then use them and build them into my own Notion arsenal that I've been building. And by the way, again, these tools are all getting better over time. So like if you use it three months ago, it'll be better right now. Um, this is this Discord chat I was mentioning that essentially has people sharing prompts, and I've been using these and building my own prompt library. And this is like my, my example of my Amazon prompt library. But I also have a personal prompt library that I've built as well of things that I'm working on or goals that I have for 2024, uh, journaling, prompts, all those things specifically that I'm using AI for that I wasn't using previously. Uh, even a prompt for a prompt. So here's like an example of an amazing prompt that essentially creates a prompt for you. Uh, this was one that was open sourced in that Discord library that I'm talking about. 
and allows you to essentially build far better prompts than you can build with just one or two sentences. And you would just copy paste this and then feed ChatGPT with better prompts. Here's one for Seller Central, right? And this is one that I used this prompt for to create this prompt, which essentially now my team never has to go and create a customized seller support message. You can just come in here, copy and paste this and drop this into ChatGPT. And now we have a beautiful and powerful post that we can essentially get Amazon's attention on. Uh, and just a few small things to be a better human, right? You can essentially use this, use ChatGPT as your nutritionist. Uh, this is someone that posted on Twitter. I essentially like to use ChatGPT to help me prepare for the week for meals specifically. I had I use it for coming up with uh, training sessions for me uh, instead of actually subscribing to a service, and I just train it on the gym equipment that I have. And then essentially, I like to use ChatGPT to get some reflection on myself. So for self-growth specifically, uh, sometimes it could be your best friend because you want to essentially, you have a problem. Let's just say it's at 2 a.m. in the morning. You're not going to hit your friend up for that. But say you have ChatGPT at your, at your side, it's a great sidekick to run ideas against. Uh, and even for therapy, right? So if, for a ther as a therapist, I have a much larger prompt for it, but here's just like an example of one, right? You can use this uh, very quickly, but I have a much more robust built out version for personal therapy where I share my feelings and the situation and I, I get answers based on the knowledge. It remembers our conversations. It provides very precise contextual uh, feedback for me. And while it's probably not a replacement for a human therapist, it's a very close second. So anyway, if you like what I had to share today, and thank you everyone for tuning in, and you wanted a copy of these slides, just scan that QR code right there. Uh, you can connect with me as well. I'm very active on LinkedIn and Twitter. And um, what else? My personal email, if you just prefer the old school way, is chad at prophecy.com. Again, that's chad, C-H-A-D, at prophecy.com. And thank you. Thanks, chat. You guys, I think next time I'm going to charge for the webinar. You know, you guys give too much value. You no, know? I, I do it for free, but you guys give too much. But th that's why I know, I guess we do it. You no, know? we can, we should help people and you're going to get much more in return. So now we're going to go to the questions because it's almost Christmas. People are going on vacations. So we shouldn't uh, just uh, waste your time. So here are the questions we have from our, uh, from people who actually could not attend the event. So the first one is from uh, Maddie Johnson. And the question is, what is your go-to AI chatbot? What is a must? To be honest, I think it anybody can answer that. What is your go-to AI chatbot? I'm not sure I got the question 100%. Joe? Yeah. I'll go. So we, for me, um, Claude, so I think Joe, Joe talked about this in a presentation. Claude is definitely the best when it comes to writing. So I will write blogs and e uh, I don't write emails with chat with AI, but if I'm writing a blog, I'll, I'll do Claude. Um, if I'm doing like research, I'll do Bing because Bing has uh, references. Um, it, you know, when you're searching something, it, it will give you reference so you can see where the articles come from. I found that Bard is super bad for hallucinations and will just completely make up s statistics and facts. So I, it, for me, not usable yet. Uh, so yeah, uh, up for me, Lord and Bing. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm old fashioned, you know, I'm, I still use ChatGTP. This Sunday, actually, I had a partner had like a very good story how he saved like a, a million and a half for a sailor. And I said, okay, ChatGTP, you know, turn that into a fairy tale. So, I mean, people like the story a lot. So, but I use it for really basic stuff, like emojis, social posts, but uh, there is a lot of tools, by the way, you know, so the, what, what, Joe, what's your favorite, you know? Yeah, I, I, I think for me, it's a mixture between ChatGPT and Claude. Um, I find the sort of the combination of the two is the most powerful. I really love ChatGPT for the fact that you can use it to analyze data and to get sort of like to feed the data and then use use it 
to do various things, but I think Claude is, is superior in terms of feeding it with more text-based um, inputs and actually really large, um, really large sort of uh, documents. So you can actually analyze a lot. You know, what I talked about earlier, for example, analyzing reviews, you can feed so much review data and then output a lot of really useful, you know, pros and cons, like, you know, best features and whatever. And this ideally you want to do with Claude um, because it's just, um, it would just do a much better job. Thanks, Joe. Let, let's go to the next question. Uh, this one is for Max because it has Ecom 10 in the question. What's on the roadmap for Ecom 10? That's from Henrik Andersen. Um, thank you, Henrik. So we like we're basically building a tool to enable uh e-commerce sellers to generate all the content they need and push out across all the marketplaces. So we in the next next week we're gonna we have integration with ebay and we're gonna have integration with amazon live next week which is super exciting um we've done infographics and we're gonna launch uh, a plus content in about uh the week after that so those are kind of the immediate things that we're working on in in the current sprints um but then more broadly basically the vision is that you can generate super high quality listings lifestyle images optimize text, et cetera, et cetera, continuously optimize these for trends and events and push this across like every marketplace. So that's that's where we're going. Okay, Max, one question for me. Do you have stats about how much time and money you save to a server who is doing the old way? Yeah, I have some case studies on the website, but we what we've um we've we've improved conversion by about 10% uh with like our generated content versus uh, you know, the previous non-AI generated content. Um, in terms of money, like it takes seconds. So like, you know, it saves you thousands of, of dollars. Um, so we've got a case study on that as well, but it's probably okay. quite evident. Okay, you need to paste those case studies on, on LinkedIn. Sure, yeah, yeah, I'll get them up. Okay, uh, okay so ne next question. This, this one, I think it's for chat. How does your business analyze competitor pricing data for pricing decisions from May Chen? How do we analyze uh, competitors? Yeah, exactly. Competitor yeah, so we actually pricing. scrape in. So based on your key, your your hero keyword, we scrape your competitors every day. So we we take their top ten competitors on page one and scrape their data. Not just scrape their listing, but we scrape their price. We scrape their inventory position. We scrape the reviews, we scrape everything, the quantity of the reviews, reviews, the quality of the reviews, and that's all pulled into our model so that you can make the right decisions. Because on Amazon, it's not always the right decision to go in to increase price. Sometimes you want to decrease price, which offsets an increase in price. You sell more unit velocity, you increase, you get a better BSR, a better bestseller ranking position. And now you're essentially owning page one instead of renting page one with with PPC placement, with ad placement. So um, yeah, so we scrape competitors. Uh, I mean, it's very, very unique what we've built for private label sellers. And we're seeing roughly about a 10 to 15% lift in profit and gross profit for the brands that come on our platform. Okay, guys, so write down. That's probably one of the most uh, valuable information. Talk with max 10%. Use chat another 10%. So we are 20%. So let's see you now what the other guys are gonna add to your margin. So next question, I don't know is going to answer that but the question is the point can i see what the ai says ethan carter i'm not sure no you guys are the experts can i see what the ai says i, I don't even know how to answer that if it's referring to zip chat i uh, i don't know uh, who's referring to yes you can see from uh, all the conversation going on uh, what the ai is talking about and you can correct the AI in order to provide more context for future. I'm not sure if it was, if, if it okay. was with that. Okay, sure. Actually, that, that's a funny question though. Nick, for taxes, hello tax, is there anybody doing anything for AI? Guys, you know, taxes are old fashioned. You cannot do anything with AI. Some countries are even not digitalized yet. So you need to go the old fashioned way. You go from me and I'm the main AI. I'm going to connect you with everybody who can help out. So. That's the uh, short answer. Another question. This is for what is the following? 
what is the founding story behind Ecom Tent from Yuki Tanaka? That's for you. Um, sure. So, uh, I I was working in Amazon. Um, I was, I well, I mean, in in my personal life, I've always wanted to start a business. I was doing little, a few little businesses on the side, but like I kind of had this view that you can't, you have to go all in on something. And then when the AI revolution happened and as i mentioned my co-founder showed me the first release of stable diffusion um we basically started working on that uh a week later so we we were literally one of the first companies um to be like thinking about ai and e-commerce and and yeah that's that's how we got started okay thanks max another actually good question i think uh, i'm not sure if you covered that from fatima hassan how long does it take for the AI to be trained? Um, well, like it depends, uh, um, it depends what you're trying to train, right? Um, in terms of the models we trained, we our first models took a few weeks to train. Um, I mean, basically, if you're building a base model, um, so if you're like OpenAI or you're Stable Diffusion or you're one of these, like there's only six or seven companies, I think it takes, you know, billions of dollars um and months if not years uh if you're doing fine tuning which is what we're doing so you're like taking the base model and you're trying to make it uh have a certain you know bias towards a certain characteristic such as good amazon listings that takes a couple of weeks uh so yeah okay thanks and you guys Huka, how long did it take you to train zip chat i guess i mean even yeah, i can ask... for us it takes approximately one minute every 50 pages you submit so depending on the size of your uh, website and your store, uh, how many pages it has, uh, it takes approximately that. So we have uh, merchants with like tens of thousands of pages. For them, it took like approximately one hour, uh, one one hour, one hour and a half, something like that. But most uh, brands have not even like 100, 150 uh, pages. Uh, so it takes like one minute, two minutes. Okay, so so let's just summarize. Now, why can you sales guy, a human being, you know, Whenever there is a new product and service, you need to train them. The thing is with the AI sales guy, you know, it just takes minutes to get to pitch him about the new service and new feature, right? Yeah, but what's really important, it's the, the information, the quality of the information you provide the AI. So for example, what we always recommend is on top of the pages that you submitted to the AI to, uh, as a trainer, a training, uh, to create, for example, PDFs uh, with like really detailed informations about the products, uh, information about the buyer personas, uh, that's really important. So the the, the chat will be able to uh, understand who's uh, who it's talking uh, to, and and of course the conversation can be even more tailored. Uh, so it's not just about uh, the training you can do once, but it's keep training the AI. Uh, keep checking the information, especially at the beginning. We have a customer that made almost $1 million just from the chat. Of course, it's not like our chat is not like uh, magic. If if the brand is not selling, uh, the chat is not going to sell. But if the, the brand is already uh, a successful brand, our chat will just increase their numbers. That's what basically uh, works for. So these, these guys, they provided, I think, a few hundreds of correction the first month. And uh, basically the months, the, the first month, the second month, just a few tens. And then the third month, they were just like providing five correction. Now they're not co providing any more co uh, correction just because now the AI is fully trained, uh, knows all the different uh, situation that uh, the visitor can come up with. And uh, the answers are just perfect. Okay, thanks, man. Uh, next question. Uh, that's for, for chat, I think, from Sophia Mueller. Do you actively change prices? We actively change prices. So brands come to us, they give us their min price, their max price, and their landed costs, and then we do the rest. So we're changing price once a day, just once a day, and we're seeing a pretty large lift. Our model, just going back to your question around training, we have something called the hyper-learning phase. So the first 30 days of using Prophecy, we're essentially oscillating and changing pricing between a negative 5 to 5% bounce so that we can essentially learn and train the model. So it chews on that data and essentially can optimize for the optimal pricing based on demand, based on your competition, based on conversion rate, based on sessions, based on a whole host of signals that it ingests in the model. 
Thanks, chat. One question from Susan Thompson. That's for it, all of you guys. How do you keep your information secure? Because it will be out there for everyone, right? I mean, I'll respond. I mean, we're an Amazon partner. So we're in the Amazon API. They audit us and they ensure that our data is secure. Uh, that's how we do it at Prophecy, but I you know, would love to hear how others are doing it. Okay, actually, yeah. just uh, uh, Susan is saying, you know, question is in general on AI platforms. Oh, okay, so, so like, yeah, so, just, so, so then to answer that specifically, like we don't embed into another AI platform. So we're not embedding into or connecting into another AI. We're, we're building our own native AI. It's not embedded. So we host all the information ourselves. We don't share it with ChatGPT or OpenAI or any other company for that matter outside of ingesting data from Amazon, which is why we have the partnership. Thanks, Chat. Uh, another question. This one, actually, that's from me. It has nothing to do with AI from Isaac Cohen. What is this country to expand in Europe and why? The, you can actually go and ask Chat GTP, but I'm going to tell you Germany, you know. For a few reasons, no. Biggest market in Europe, second after Amazon.com. They accept documents in English, no fiscal representation, which means you pay less. Distribution channel for the whole EU. If you're in the States, imagine Austin, Texas, Germany. So, and the last but not the least, now I have all the parts who can help out with the rest. So uh, that, that's the short and sweet answer. So we have, we have like a few more. The next one is for, I don't know who, who's gonna answer that. What is the best way to start learning about AI from Luca Rossi? Ask question to ChatGPT about AI. What's the best way to start learning about AI? Okay, so you asked ChatGPT. Is that your answer? Yeah. I would. Um, I actually would. Um, you know, modify the answer a little bit in the sense. The best way to learn about ChatGPT at the start is to use AI and to like learn from your own sort of experience. Um, I would say the more you um, interact with the AI, the more you're kind of going to understand its pitfalls. But in general, I would say there is so many um, good learning resources right now available. Um, so if if I would do a recommendation, I would say learn how to um, do the basics of prompting uh, because that would also improve your output significantly. But as a step one, just um, just get on ChatGPT and, and prompt and, and figure out what works, what doesn't. And then obviously there is a lot of um, outside resources. I also post a lot on LinkedIn, so you can follow me. Okay, thanks, Joe. And the last question, at least from what I have here, uh, this is from uh, Amara Kingston. Have you integrated your advertising spend with your dynamic pricing strategy? Uh, that's for you, Chat. Yeah, it's a longer conversation that nobody's nobody's pulling, right? So if you look at the equation of ACOS specifically, you have like what you spend relative to your revenue. And most people focus on the spend, not on revenue. And revenue equals units times price. So we essentially harmonize the two together. So... Uh, we have something called the all-in optimizer, where if we can predict the optimal price, we can predict the optimal spend at a specific price point, and we supply that to the brands that are using our platform. Thanks, chat. And I think we're done, guys. You know, we have like most of the tens are still here. So, guys, if you have questions, this is probably the best webinar I've done this year. So, I guess you know it was a good choice to keep it for the last. So, ask your questions right now, or then if if you're out of questions, I've shared the the LinkedIn pages of our speakers, you can connect with them. I strongly recommend to follow all those guys. They share you know, a lot of gold nuggets. And of course, if you're an Amazon seller or an e-commerce seller, I strongly recommend to chat with them. You know, That's how I've met them. I've chatted with them. That's how I know what they do. But I had no idea what they're going to give out today, which is more even the monetary giveaways that we're doing. But I'm just going to mention that one more time. Uh, the, our partnership agency is giving one free partnership audit if you're an e-com service provider. If you're looking to meet partners like those today, check out scale.com. We have 1,500 partners. All the speakers here are there and many more. And if you want to expand to Europe, just get in touch with me and the partnership squad. We're going to help out with everything. Like chat, like zip chat, we're going to ask 
few key questions. If you don't know the answers, we're going to connect you with somebody who can help out. So, and of course, if you're not ready, we're going to tell you you're not ready yet. Do that. Uh, then our speakers, they have giveaways from you and they're going to be sharing your slides. Uh, we're going to send the follow up tomorrow with all this information, the giveaways, how to claim that. And of course, we're going to have the recording, which uh, separate with the different sessions for each speaker. So you can actually watch whatever you enjoyed the most. And I think we have either a question or somebody says, thank you. Great info. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Okay, thank you, Amy Carter. And I would like to wish our attendees today. Thank you for spending the time with us. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for actually taking the time to prepare such badass slides. I wish you to be safe and sound. Enjoy the vacation till the end of the year. And let's see next year what would it be. Because this was the year of the AI. Who knows what would be the next one. So enjoy and thanks again, everybody. Adios, muchachos. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao.